You can never see them. Nah, th I think it's bugged because there's times I can see where people are. Oh, we got a full team. Oh my god. Two bags. Come back, bro. He's running, dude. One of my viewers is this. You better run, boy. I'm gonna send it. Oh my. Yeah, I'm getting that rope. I'm getting the rope. 15 seconds. We're going. My rope. Three down. And I can't emo for some reason. Yo, what is going on, Jesters? It's your host, Mr. So Serious, and some of you guys have been requesting on, in fact, a lot of you guys were requesting on Twitter that um, I let you guys have a look at my AR Pulse build. So, who am I not to give the people what they want, right? You know, hands up, take it, take it, just take it off me, man, chill. So, yeah, anyway. The Pulse build, the AR Pulse build. I, I am running the P416, you can run the AK if you want. But honestly, in terms of damage to fire rate ratio, the P416 is definitely better. So as you can see with mine, I'm currently 20.9k. It's basically 21k base damage. I run Optimist and Allegro. And then the, the third talent, I don't really care about because, you know, it doesn't really affect my gun. So, you know, but it does help. Uh, enemy kills have a 5% chance to refresh active skill cooldowns can occur once every 60 seconds So I mean it does have its uses, but I don't rely on it. It's not ultra important to the build so Bear that in mind. You, you don't need to panic about the third talent the secondary. It's just the LMG It's just there for backup. So it is what it is and then on the pistol I use the protected reload so when I reload, I get that little armor buff, and it helps me survive that reload time. So, let's get into the build. So I'm running Wyvern Mask. Now, the Wyvern Mask isn't actually important to the build. I'm currently running this because of Spotter, but also because of the skill power. I don't have another mask with anything remotely close to that amount of skill power on there. And because it's a pulse build, I need... Well, it's a, you know... It's a pulse build, so I need the skill power, you know? And again, the crit chance isn't overly important. So if you can get a mask that has just skill power on there, it probably will have a higher roll skill power than what I have right now. And spotter, you Gucci, man, you Gucci, trust me, you're good. Then on the vest, I'm running the Alps Summit Armament Vest that you guys have probably seen on my one-shot shotgun build. With bonus armor, 15.5% weapon damage and hardened. That's the reason why I'm using it, is because of those two things right there. I mean, again, 
like I said, with the shotgun build, if you really want, you can go berserk. But I want that base damage right from the get-go. I don't want to rely on losing health for it. I want that damage right from the first bullet. And then as the ma as the magazine loses ammo, the damage goes up. So that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted to hit as hard as possible from the first bullet so that then when I get to the last bullet, that hits so much harder as a result. So that's the intention. And then on the mods, I am running a skill power mod with the Chem Launcher skill power. The reason I've done that is for the heals because I, I like to use this build when I'm solo. And that helps with my survivability. Um, we have a health mod with 1.6k armor on kill. And we have an offensive system firearms mod with 1% weapon damage, 4% assault rifle damage. Beautiful roll. I was happy about that. Then I'm running a Fenris holster with skill power and cooldown reduction. I need to roll precise off and put um, devastating on there. I just don't have the materials to make that happen right now. When I've made, when I finish this video, I am going to go and farm the living crap out of materials so I can put devastating on there and get the extra five percent weapon damage onto this. We have the Providence Defense knee pads for the 10% skill power, and they came with 221 skill power and empowered. It's got an offensive slot, which is empty, because if I was to, to use it, I wouldn't be able to unlock Optimist, as you can see, five or less, and I'm sitting on five, so I left it empty. If you have the choice between losing a red attribute on your gear pieces or losing a red mod take the mod lose that mod because it's not it is never going to give you as high of a damage roll as what you're going to get on your gear pieces so try and rely on your gear pieces to get the majority of your damage rather than trying to rely on the, the gear mods because i had somebody asking me how do you how do you go about if you've got too many remove a mod what what would you rather do would you rather lose the 15.5 percent weapon damage on the vest or would you rather lose the two percent weapon damage that you're gaining from using the mod you know so lose the mod chances are it's not going to give you anywhere near as much as what you're getting on your gear pieces then i'm running the gilligard the gilligard is for the total armor and we have a health roll with assault rifle damage and devastating now I did get a pair of gloves. I forget which ones they are. There we go. Assault rifle damage. So what I want to do ideally is find a pair of assault rifle damage gloves or wait for the update to come out so I can roll assault rifle damage. Oh, no, I can't because I modified that. I forget that. So what I need is a pair of gloves to roll with uh, the devastating talent on there. And then roll this 10% assault rifle damage onto those. So again, it will hit harder when I'm finished. And then the mod we have is a skill power mod. 152 skill power. Best mod I have that I can use in that slot as of right now. And then the backpack I use on the ropes. And currently it has explosive damage. Ideally hardened would have been better on there. But explosive damage, I will take it. It's fine. We have a defensive system mending mod with 3.3k bonus armor and 2.5% total armor plus 1.2k armor on kill which is really good roll really I'm, I'm super glad I got that that mod actually didn't I get a better one now that we're talking about mods I need to stop doing this in videos no I didn't um and then skill power 128 skill power second best mod I have in there because the first one is on the is, is on this piece now you don't need Gilligard for the second piece here by the way it is just i am using it because it has on the ropes it has a weapon damage it has skill power and it has the bonus armor roll on there so it has all the rolls that i'm looking for except for hardened at the bottom there but that's the reason why i'm using this so you don't need it to be Gilligard. you can use something else if you please i mean you can if you want try and go with the wyvern which I could, I could do, get some more skill power, but it will cost me armor. So, you know, again, 
this is how I have it set up. It's all about the talents. So what I what I tend to do, what I tend to do if I'm in a fight, I pop the pulse. There's my 10% weapon damage. So we can just shoot stuff down while the pulse is active. And then when that pulse goes, we drop a heal. We now have on the ropes. And now that cooldown is 60 seconds long for the uh, for the pulse. So all I need to do is just make sure that I'm dropping heals every time one's about to cool down so that on the ropes remains active for that entire 60 second duration. And as a result of that, you start out you start out popping your pulse, which gives you a 10% weapon damage because the enemies are pulsed, so you're getting a 10% damage buff on those players. Or NPCs, if you want to use this for uh, PvE, because this does work in PvE, you just go damage to elites on some pieces, you know? Um, so you get that 10 seconds, and after the update, they're looking at buffing the spotter weapon damage to 20% as opposed to 10, so it will be even stronger after the update. And then for that 60 second cooldown duration for the pulse, you keep, you keep on the ropes activated, which is an extra 25% weapon damage for a whole 60 seconds. So this, this build I love using. The reason I love using it is because it reminds me heavily of the Division 1. It reminds me of talent stacking and, you know, playing smart. And I just love it. Like, it, it feels like a Division RPG type build. I love it. It's, it's fun. Of course, I'm using the Pulse. I have a 34.1% radius mod on there. So I, I have a 70 meter radius on this as opposed to a 50, I believe the base radius is. And then 31.4% cooldown reduction, which brings it down to 58.2 seconds for the cooldown. You can go and you can go to cooldown mods if you want. Personally, I would say it's worth having one for range, one for cooldown, so that you can have your pulls back regular enough to make it useful. But you also want to try and keep that cooldown as long as you can so that you can keep on the ropes active for as long as possible. So, yeah, that's pretty much it on that one. Oh, and the uh, the chem launcher is 27.3% 20, uh, heal and a 38.4% heal. Um, that gives me a total of just short of 84k armor repair. And that's pretty much it. And again, make sure you're running the survivalist specialist for the assault rifle damage. And you're pretty much good to go. If we have a quick look through the stats, you can see there's a small amount of crit chance on there. But again, it's focused on weapon damage. That crit chance will probably end up going once I get the right pieces to make the build happen in the way that I want it to happen. Um, yeah, that is that is it. That's the build you've been asking for. That's the build that I, I tend to run solo. This is pretty much an assault rifle version of the uh, the LMG build that I have. The LMG Pulse build. They're both more or less the same build. Just one's built for the AR, one's built for the LMG. They're both designed to play the same way. Give the player the same buffs. Give the player the same survivability. Just one's built around the LMG, one's built around the AR. But I will get the LMG Pulse build out as well. I'm not sure whether to wait until after the update because obviously we've changes to Unhinged and a couple of other things. It may it, it may stay the same. It may get buffed. It may be slightly nerfed. I don't really know how it's gonna how it's gonna be affected by the upcoming update. So I don't really know what to do with that yet. But I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference. The stuff that I'm using isn't overly being changed. Spotters getting buffed, unhinged getting a slight nerf, you know, things like that. So, we'll have to see. We will have to see. But you guys wanted the AR Pulse build. We know ARs are getting some love in the next update, so get ready, man. AR's getting a buff. Spotter's getting a buff. This 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 build is buff city come the next update, so get it ready. You guys are awesome, man. I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. I'm glad to be back making these videos, helping you guys out, interacting with you guys. If you haven't already, make sure you head over to twitch.tv forward slash Mr. So Serious underscore at the end of it. 
I'll drop a link down below so you guys know where to go. Click it, drop a follow, call in the live streams, come say hi, ask for help. If I'm playing with viewers, ask to join, whatever. You know, man, you guys are welcome always. And that's pretty much it. You guys stay awesome, and I'll see you in another video. Peace.